Okay. Now we are moving to the next chapter of electrochemistry, which is the 10.3 electrolytic cell. I'm Engineer D, and if you are new to this channel, this is our most the academic modified channel. Here we provide uh, quality videos that can help you or guide you all through your chemistry and mathematics courses. I will be a little bit fast, as I do say, because all these things are well prepared and they are in form of uh, a kind of visualization in which you can see all what I'm going to be taking you guys through. So the topics or the subtopics under this will be displayed by the admin. Admin, please. Let's see what we want to talk about today. Yes, fine. Under 10.3, we are going to be talking about how to do an electrolytic cell. We've done electrochemical cell and the next equation. We are also going to talk about how to describe the operation of an electrolytic cell. We're going to talk about different aspects on how to explain the influence of the factor that this, what that affects the discharge of ion during electrolysis. We're going to talk about different products of electrolysis form and different type of uh, factors that affect each ion being discharged. We're going to consider Faraday force law. We're going to talk about the uses of electrolysis in general. And we're going to talk different type of different electrolysis of different compounds. The ones I'm going to take are molten salt, that is sodium chloride that is deep in the curse water. We're going to talk about water itself. Concentrated and dilute sodium chloride, and I'm going to talk about aqueous NH2SO4. I want to put some exercise also in it, in which you guys are going to try and see if you understand this. So, like I said, the course is full package. This is the last part, and if you are just joining us, you can subscribe to this channel and click on the notification button. So, I kept kick started with the first one. Let's see the first one electrolysis. Now, we define electrolysis from junior classes as the chemical decomposition of electrolyte when a passage of electric current is passed through it. This is the basic definition we give to that. So, it is a kind of situation or a kind of what? A kind of cell that use a chemical that use electricity for a non spontaneous redox reaction. Remember, we define the other type of cell, the voltaic cell, which is also called the carbonic cell, the ones that use a chemical. Chemical energy, I get in it to develop what a kind of not non spontaneous redox reaction. So, many times in examination, you might be faced with distinction between the electrolytic cell and the electro what, chemical cell. You need to be careful. Other things we are going to see in the next slide. Let's see the next one. Now, here we are going to talk more extensively. Please admit, take care. Please. Now, here we are going to look into some characteristics of electrolytic cell which I also talked about, talking about the composition, the cations and ions, the anode and the cathode. Now, the only thing we just need to keep in mind is what it is the reverse of that particular cell we call the electro, electrochemical cell. As you can see, redox reaction occur, as we know. The only thing you need to keep in mind is what? Yeah, it is you are going to use a direct current if you want to set up what an electrolytic cell. Unlike the other one in which what you are not connecting it, to a battery. Illustration and other things you need to know are going to do what? Are going to be explained as we proceed on this topic. So quickly, through this part, I can quickly read. An electrolytic cell is an electrochemical cell that undergoes a redox reaction when electrical energy is applied. Like I said, you must connect it to a source. It consists of two electrodes, we've talked about that. The anode and the cathode, that is immersed in an electrolyte. So electrolytes are liquid substance, and when you pass what a DC, circuit or a DC current to them, they what they split up. So that is the definition we've talked about before. Then I can go to the next one because we have 65 pages here. We are going a long way. This is the fifth page. This is a good example of how to set up an electrolytic cell. Now these are the compartments, these are the anodes for you for beginners. You can always keep that in mind. Now this is the two compartments which are I'm going to talk more about as we move forward. Like I do say, I'm going to talk more about. So we have this. You can see this is the electrolyte, the liquid substance. This one is the electrolyte. That's the electrolyte. These are the two compartments. It is connected to a source. You can see then there is what we call conversion of the flow of current. Current will flow. If you connect something to a battery, you expect current to flow. Please, there are what we call modern convention flow. But basically, we say anode is the positive electrode, important fact. Then cathode is a negative electrode. So basic thing we've talked about before, remember, oxidation is loss, oil, leak. So please just hold on a little bit. Oxidation is loss and reduction is gain. Oxidation
oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. We call that ordinary. So, like I do say, positive anode oxidation, negative cathode reduction. So, that's another thing. These are just abbreviations that can help you going forward. So, basic thing, anions migrate to the anode. That is what we are showing here. Cations migrate to the cathode. So, what happens at the anode? That's why I said positive. Anode is positive electrode, which oxidation occur. Cathode is negative electrode. I call it PAO-NCR. Then oil rig is popular everywhere you go. The next one, I mean, let's make it faster. Thank you very much. Now, the source of direct current that is connected, you know, this can cannot just happen. You need a DC, a DC circuit. Now, sometimes, most times, we use a battery. Everybody knows battery. So, and sometimes we use our force. We try to force electron to flow from the anode to the car. That is the conventional flow of current. This is what we call the conventional flow of current inside of our current. This is very popular in your physics. If you are a physics student and you are studying physics, this is very popular. It's what in an electrolytic cell, it flows or we make it to flow from, I told you, anode is what is a positive value. So, conventional flow of current is it moves from what? Positive down to negative. So, you need to keep that at the back of your mind. So, I think basically what is most important here is just for us to know that what this convention is very important when we are dealing with... Uh, I hope you can see that now. So, that is very important for you. The next one, I'm going to 7th of 65, the 7th page. Okay, fine. Now, important thing I've, I've talked about, but you can just go through it. It's a summary of what I've talked about. Oil ring and power and I hope I'm good. So, if you have the oil ring and power, this is all what you have here. You don't need to master mind too much of things. Just keep it at the back of your mind. What happened? We've talked about it. Direct source of energy supplies electric current. After I supply electric current, cathode, we said cations migrate to cathode, anions migrate to anode. Oxidation takes place at the anode. Reduction takes place at the cathode. Simple summary, you can always keep that at the back of your mind. And this is what is contained here. Electrodes, electrodes are those poles, those two compartments. We've talked about them on the electrochemical series as well. When we talk about next equation in the second part. Now, we just want to talk about how this is being formed. And now we want to focus mainly about how to electrolyze different compounds and some factors that affect that. Let's move to the next one. Thank you very much. I mean, a very good example of all the setup. I'll give a simple example of silver nitrate. Everybody knows silver nitrate. When it's ionized, ionized means it's, we dissolve it in the water. In an electrolyte, basically we use water. This is a very good example. The compartment of anode and cathode. Then we talk about the movement. Now, the first thing is what the compound itself, we ionize, we dissociate. AgNO3. When if it is silver nitrate, you can see in here, then the first thing we have here is that oxidation takes place. And we have talked about how to write the equation of oxidation. Remember that electrochemical. So if you are new to this, we can quickly talk about that. Oxidation, we say it's the loss of electron. Oxidation is loss of electron. So this is like basically, let me explain, from solid to aqueous. One electron as what? This is what? Oxidation is loss. Reduction is gain. Most people will say, how do we write this? This is plus times minus. A little bit of mathematics. So please be careful about that. And when we talk about reduction, just like the electrochemical cell, it is moving from aqueous solution to what? You can see this is more like what we've done. You started the class with us. So be careful about this. Aqueous back to solid. This guy here, we said as what? Look at this now. This one has lost electron. This one we say it has gained electron to become solid. So how do we know that? You can always get. For some of you, we say the free state matter is zero. Oxidation is what we say one. But this is the reaction. It is like the reverse of the electrochemical reaction. And some of you that you are used to all these simple things. Look at this. Let me give you a very simple illustration. If we have a, a simple, let me give you a simple silver plus. You can write like this. It's also acceptable. I want to write plus E minus. Look at this now. Plus times minus is minus. So this is plus one minus one. We give you nothing but what? AG. 
So what you are telling us here is that the oxidation number here was one as a free state element. I hope I'm not cutting. The oxidation number is zero. So here you can say here what has happened here is well, there is a what this one now this is plus e minus plus means gain. So here we say this is a kind of reduction reduction reaction because there's a gain of electron. So but if you want to talk about uh, increase and decrease in oxidation, we can see from one to zero, it is what it has come down. So it has reduced. So if you are used to this method. It is not a big deal, like I do say, it is not always compulsory for you to watch, but in some standard examination, when you see something moving from solid now, you can see this one now, this one we say electrons, and what electron has been gained. Why? Because you dip this solid substance into a solution, and when you dip into a solution, it's ionized to become aqueous. By what? By what? By what? By losing an electron. It is already inside here. Then it gain an electron to become back what is solid. That is the interpretation we give to it here. I don't want to waste time. This is just 8 of 65. This is a simple setup of how electrolysis is carried out. Just keep it in mind. Oil rig, power, NCR. I don't think you should have any problem there. The next one. Thank you. Now, basic exam, standard exam, like your wire, neck, and so on and so forth. We ask you to differentiate between the one I talk about, the electrolytic cell, which is called voltaic cell. Or galvanic cell and the electro the the electrochemical cell which is called the voltaic or the galvanic cell or the electrolytic cell which is the one that uses DC. Now the major differences you might have studied before is what talking about their compartment. The first thing is once use what a what a DC circuit or you can put it in your own English. Now in a voltaic cell, the electrochemical cell, what you need what is just what use a spontaneous reaction to generate electrical energy. But here, before you can, well, you use a particular electrical energy to drive what? The reaction. Here, it's a spontaneous. Spontaneous means natural. To actually bring out what? Electrical energy. But here, you need a source to generate electrical energy before you can actually have what? You can see it's like opposite of what is here. This is spontaneous reaction to produce electrical energy. This use electrical energy to drive what? It was a non spontaneous cell because it is not more occurring naturally. Do you understand the difference between spontaneous? And these are more like what I believe you might have known. Now, electron generated at anode is negative. In this case, electron removed from anode is positive. This is very simple to understand. Anode, we've talked about here. Here, electron that is removed, we remove electron. That was what I was trying to tell you the other time. When you remove electron, from a particular element, you said it has what? It has oxidized. And that is popular in your electrochemical and your electrolytic cell. Here, when you generate an electron at anode, we say it is negative. Electron that is removed from the anode is positive. Then this one popular, electron consumed at the cathode, just like opposite of what you have. Electron consumed, you know when something take everything consumed, at the cathode is positive. Electron supply in the cathode is negative. Now, let me just give you a simple way to know this. I think it will be better. You can say, here, cation, uh, cathode, anode is the node in this electrolytic cell now. Anode is what is the positive word electrode. Here, anode is what the negative electrode. So you'll be able to now use your knowledge of uh, power and energy uh, to understand electron supply, electron gain, electron remove, and electron what. <laughs> so because some of you might actually have problem with that. What we are saying that here, Anode is positive electrode, here anode is negative electrode. So the opposite is what you are going to write for the next different. So I haven't explained that word. One use what spontaneous reaction to drive electrical energy. The other use what yeah, what electrical energy or a DC circuit to drive what a non-spontaneous reaction. I'll do next please, please. Ten. Now, ten says oh, yeah, yes, we are now getting started to where we are going. Factors that affect discharge of ions during electrolysis. Student need to keep this in mind also because most of your exam we ask you to list that. The first one is what? Now, why I put this? Because most of you are used to it as a position of ion. Position of ions in the electrochemical series. You are used to that in the electrochemical series. I write it as ECS. Now, because of standard exam, JPEP student and uh, IGMB, you have to be careful because I use this position as the same thing 
as well called the standard reduction and electrode potential of the spaceship. Because most questions in Jupiter will test you on the standard reduction and the standard oxidation. I told you the other, the more positive, the more the reduction ability, remember? And the more negative, the more what? The oxidation, the more tendency for it to oxidize. We've done that under the concept of our next equation. Now, here, if you are still an old level student, position of ion in ECS, that means you need to know the electrochemical series of both cations and anions. I hope you have studied that in your junior classes. And if you have not, like I do say, there is always a first time to everything. But here, in this case, you remember, you remember the concept, the simple concept you need to keep in mind is cathode. Cations will migrate to the cathode. Remember that anions will migrate to the anode. We are talking about this electrolytic itself. So if that is the case, what we only keep in mind is our if the more the positive electrode, the one that has more positive charge, we have a preference to this charge than the one that have what a negative what charge. But if you are in the negative electrode, the one that has a negative charge, that is the anions, we have what more preference or preference, the way you call it, to this charge than those that what that are positively charged. So this is the key about our standard electric potential that we have studied. But most all level students WIAC, NECO, GC, CBSC and soft examination exam board that are still all level we test you basically on position of A. So that I may not talk about that for now, but if you know them, I think it is K N A, not that I think I know. K N A C A M D. That means me I'm not I'm in the rush. A L Z N F E P B H C U Copper, you have copper, you have A G H G A G and A U. You can also add P T platina. So that's just the trend for cations. Like I said, I don't have time. And if it's for anions, it's also very simple. You should know that there is memories we use for all these things. If you're a beginner. So, but that being that, that is for basic level. Then you say the elements that is below in your chemical, your chemical series will be discharged in preference of the one above it. That is the logic you have been taught in junior classes. But I think in standard exam, it is basically on, you know, in most calculation questions, they will give you value of E naught. You understand? So if the E naught is negative, the one that is more negative will be discharged at the anode. I guess, and the one that is more positive will be discharged at the cathode. That is what we are talking about, the first factor. Now, I would say that the second factor says uh, the concentration of the, of the species. I want to talk about concentration of species. As you tell students, it only affects the what? The anode. It does not affect the cathode. About concentration, I'll talk about it. It's all about all available here. Then the last one, the nature of electrode. If you are using a type of electrode, there are some electrode I told you, they are inert electrode. They don't take part in what electrolysis. We talked about that in 10.1. Admin can remember that. I'm very sure about that. And there are some electrode that is similar to the nature of what you want to electrolyze. Definitely, they are going to have effect on them. So all these are what we're going to talk about now. So let's see, Admin, as we start with the first one. Time is always a major constraint. The first point, the first point we have before us here is the rule of the standard electro potential. For A-level students, you can quickly listen to this. When you have two house reactions, and these are the situations, listen, I've talked about it. When you are talking about the cathode, reduction with more positive, you can see, more positive will be discharged at the cathode. You know, what did I say, what happened at the cathode? Cations move to the cathode. So which one, the one that has the most positive what? That has the most positive, or the one that has the highest reduction process, that is the one that has, that the E naught is more positive, will be discharged. That's what we're talking about here. And if it is the anode, that is the anion, oxidation takes place at the anode. The one that has the what the more negative, I've talked about this, E naught will be the one that what that will be discharged. And that is what we're talking about here. So I mean you can move to the next one. Let's see what we can do here. The next one will be, I think your system is angry. Just do it calmly, please. You don't need to rush yourself if you have issues with your system. So uh, while waiting for admin, just keep it in mind, it's a simple stuff. When you have uh, the more at the cathode, the more the positive E naught, the more the one that will be discharged. At the anode, the more the negative E naught, the one, the more the one that will be 
discharge. So these are things that we talk about when we are talking about our, all this stuff. So we can we shall see that I think we are back. So if that is the case, small small place, we are not rushing, we have to make it the way it should be done so that we don't have this is not where we are in this. I mean, please follow us. If you are you are very important in this course. So the next one please the next one please. So uh, this is the next one. How we now start with electrolysis of molten salts. That's the first one I'm gonna to do today. So the first one not the last one. Molten salts contain a cation and an anion. We know cation is positively charged ion, and anion is negatively charged ion. Now, in an electrolytic cell, cations are what they migrate to the cathode by reduction, anions migrate to the anode by oxidation. So let's check out how to electrolyze molten salts that require what high temperature for it to make. That is what we want to talk about. Next. Thank you. Now, the first thing is this. First thing first. Example, molten salt. Let us ionize salt. Salt, everybody knows, NaCl. When you ionize, ion present are Na plus and Cl minus. Please listen. Now, I haven't said that at the anode. We've talked about that. What happened at the anode? Oxidation takes place at the anode. What happened? The anions will migrate to the... And which one is the anions here? I hope students can identify anions and cations. So this is the anion here, chlorine comes here. So we talk about chlorine. Please, you can write yours in a way you guys know how to write it. If you are not used to this, because I know some methodology that your teacher have explained in junior classes or in early classes, not even call it junior, are quite different from the way I've written this. Because I'm writing the state from liquid to, to gas. So the other has the final state of what is being discharged. This is it. If you are used to writing one by one, which is popular, Anyways, so if you write chlorine as Cl, I'm actually waiting for this to come up. I think I'm having issues with this my sixth term. So apologies guys, uh, I'm gonna know what to do to this with time. So we have chlorine, chlorine is Cl minus. So some of you are used to writing, like I told you, this is annually loss of electron minus E minus. Wow, that is just a kind of thing I wouldn't like. So let's just look into so, like I said, it's just about the way you understand this thing. It can be written back and forth. Like you write chlorine Cl2 gas plus 2E minus plus times minus means it has lost two electrons to give you that. Or you can write it as an individual way of writing it. Like I do say, it all depends on what you have learned in your junior classes. If you have learned and how to write this thing in a special way, what I mean by special way is uh, your own way. You have written it, some of you write it individually like CL, wow, CL, you have, uh, sorry that, just trying to make sure this thing is. Uh, so if I have uh, CL, wow. I don't like that. It's too small. Let me make the custom efforts. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you have a Cl minus, so we're talking about uh, anode. Anode is, uh, we said at the anode, remember, PAHO NCL, that is the shortcut. Oxidation. Oxidation is lost. So if you are used to writing like this, because I know most of the most of you guys are, are used to writing in a different way. You write minus E minus because we say oxidation is loss of electron. So here you have uh, say minus plus E minus. Region is loss. So to give you Cl and Cl is divalent. We write Cl plus Cl. We now be Cl two. So the truth about all this thing is that. Any way you are used to writing this. So instead of writing it one by one here, so I can just put two at it at this place and put CL2 here. It's still the same thing. So be careful about that. What you are showing here is that what it has lost electron. So and I'm writing it from the left hand side to the right hand side. In this case here, you are writing from the what? The implication of this is the same thing as this. So please note that. So any way you are used to writing it is not a big thing. So about what is discharged at the anode. Remember, we ionize this card. After we ionize, 
we we talk about the one that moves to the what negative electrode which is anode for oxidation oxidation is loss of electron so at the cathode reduction of curve, what we have the cation move there we write the equation i told you if you are used to writing nda plus reduction is gain of electron is plus e minus electron is e minus you are going to have nd and then is one of it so that is that so be careful about if you are used to this type fine if you are used to this type also both of them are fair so this type was taught in our first and the second video whereby we said was the electron cancel we call it half cell what reaction if you remember to have an overall reaction of this and this is what we have talked about in the first and second what video so but like i said if it is individual reaction on how to electrolyze what we are saying is what this is the first thing that you keep in mind they will ionize after it ionized cations move towards the cathode and anions move to the anode forward both what reduction and oxidation respectively so the next one, I don't want to make, I don't want us to spend too much of time on simple things. So electrolysis of sodium chloride, molten sodium chloride, is important. Now the process of making molten sodium chloride by electrolysis is called, but this setup is called the Dan cell. It's also popular in your objective chemistry, multiple choice questions. You can come across how you keep that in mind. So this is the setup of a Dan cell. How it is being said. Be careful. We said molten. That means it has what it has been dipped in what in what in water. So there is what there is water. So molten sodium chloride is mixed with calcium chloride. Then these are the two compartments for anode and cathode. So there is always what we say there's something that we what generates what the flow of what the current. Current will flow told you from this side to the other side. So all these are very important. And this is what you want to electrolyze. Then be careful about this. Now in the downstairs, there was some questions and just chemistry is simple if you are careful. Look at this setup now. From this setup, these are the composition for some examiner or X standard exam. And ask you to just draw down the process. Molten sodium chloride is mixed with calcium chloride. So at this compartment, you have the molten sodium chloride. Here also molten sodium chloride. This is the cylindrical steel. This is the equation of the reaction. How do we electrolyze it? Let's see that in the next video. So next video I mean for us to understand this better. Now, how do we electrolyze this in this page, please? So the next one, I think there is an error somewhere. So okay, I think the first exercise for us today, we can quickly do that. It's not gonna waste our time. This one says in the electrolysis of molten sodium bromide, NABR, what is the product of product form at the anode? What did I tell you about that? Ionize. You have to ionize. Ionize this, it will give you Na plus and Br what? Br minus. So the first thing is to ionize. When you ionize, what happens? This guy here moves to the cathode and this guy here will move to the hand. So if that happens, because it is what molten, there's also water. Water is H2O, which we also ionize towards H plus and what? OH minus. This is the way we teach in junior classes so that it will be quite explicit and understandable for a beginner. So that means what you are having at the cathode are both Na plus, just listen to this short method, and H plus. And what you have at the anode is the Br minus and the OH minus. This is the way we, these are the two compartments. Your cathode and your anode. So what we now talk about, you know, at the beginning of this, we are taking some factors that are affecting which ion is going to what be preferred to the other. So how do we get the ion to be preferred now? In this case, we now use some what some of what the first factor is what I'm talking about. And I told you for A level student, it depends on the factor of what of the what standard EMF of the cell, which we denote by E naught. In junior classes, the first factor talks about the position of this element in the electrochemical state. So if we use that as a factor, if it is junior level, the E naught may not be given. In senior level, E naught of this and this will be given. And the one that has the highest E naught at this particular point will be the one that will be discharged. And the one that has that at the other part is what is going to be discharged. So this is what we want to talk about in the next slide. But about the preference of ion, 
The logic I told you is what? The one below will be discharged in preference of the one above. Look at this compartment, sodium and hydrogen. Hydrogen is below sodium in that series I have written the other time. So hydrogen is going to be discharged at this point. Coming to the second compartment, when you write the electrochemical series of an ion, OH is the last on the series. If you don't know now, you know, I can quickly help you write. This is going to be discharged at that point. How will this ionize? This is the way it ionizes. We say OH minus junior classes combined with OH minus. You can just listen to this short wave. It's better than coming stuff that you don't understand. HH is H2. So OH and OH come together to give us water, which is already in the part of the solution, plus O. As you can see, H2 and 1 O. So O is not a monovalent, everybody knows. So O, nascent oxygen, combined with another nascent oxygen to give you O2. You can write this equation directly by writing a full balance. If you put two here, you know you have to balance the equation. So it will be four weight and stuff like that, which we are still going to talk about in details as we move forward. So what I'm trying to say to your first example, which is here before you, because I don't provide provide solution for this example. Yes, it is not for this only one. The other ones have the solution, but this one I intentionally did not provide the solution so that we can try that and see if you are moving with the explanation. So that is the answer for this. We can now move to the next one. Thank you very much. Now, the next second example is the electrolysis of water. So we are going to perform the same process. We are still talking about the first factor. That, that is talking about the standard electrode potential of that particular cell or for junior students, position of the ion in the ECS. Let's say this example. We want to electrolyze water. Everybody knows water is H2O. Water is an electroactive substance that may be oxidized or reduced in the process. Water ionized, first stage, you can see. When it ionized, H plus and OH minus. H plus we move to the cathode, OH minus we move to the anode. So for that, you have the full ionic equation, overall cell equation, anode and cathode. This is what we are trying to show you here. So now, if you don't know this overall equation, how to balance, that is if you have missed the first and the second video. You can write it the other way I just explained to you. That is trying to like ionize H2O. But this is also not difficult to know. If you want me to quickly explain to you, it's a simple way to actually ionize. See, what we are saying here is that uh, this is anode equation. At the anode, we talk about anode. What happened at the anode? Oxidation. So now, H2O split up, you can see, O2 gas plus what? Four electrons. So what we do here, because this is water, so we are adding, it is like a redox form of equation. Some of you don't know how to balance a redox equation. If that is not known, this may look difficult, but on a more serious note, it is not difficult. What we do in terms of water, we add hydrogen to what water, we add what OH2, if you have studied redox in your junior classes. But if you don't know how to do this, it is not the only way to electrolyze. Like I said, the simple way in junior classes is by splitting or ionizing water. Move one to the cathode, move the other to the anode, then look at the other compartment and see what is going to be disturbed. But overall reaction, which is what I need, is this. And this is what I want us to focus on. Water is a liquid. When it ionizes, you can see hydrogen and oxygen. And basically, you don't even need to waste your time if you are asked to tell you water is going to be ionized. Then you can talk about the oxygen I told you. Now, water is H2, the simple way. If you don't want to write a redox equation, you don't know how to balance acidic and basic medium, H plus and OH minus. So basically, H plus is only the one here, but the one of OH minus, it is not OH minus that is going to be discharged. It is oxygen. I just talked about that. OH minus combined with OH minus will give you water and oxygen. So that is why we have hydrogen and oxygen. And basically, if you ionize water, H plus and what OH minus, it's popular every under the topic of ionic equilibrium. I mean you can move to the just drop carefully. Thank you very much. Now, look at this. This is a setup of how this guy is being electrolyzed and how we have these two reactions. You can see water is reduced at the cathode to produce hydrogen gas, simple method, and water is oxidized at the anode to produce oxygen gas. We talk about hydrogen and oxygen and vibrated 
And this is the type of setup. This type of setup is what we've talked about time and time again on how to produce water, how to have water, how to actually electrolyze water. So this type of setup is the normal setup where you have a DC circuit or a DC current. You have the electrodes, you have the what? The electrolyte, the liquid is called the electrolyte, and the flow of cations and amines. I hope you understand it. We move to the next one. Thank you. Now, this is where we are going because now we are now in aqueous salt because most of your exam, exam type question we basically test you on aqueous solution. Now, when I say aqueous solution, those that have been deep in water, a very good example was the first exercise I did the other time. You know, I told you we have the solution, we ionize. Water is also there, it's also going to what ionize. So how do we do that? I'm not going to waste time because I told you I'm going to do this in two times. I'm going to stop, I think, at the 38th slide for now, and I'll continue so that it will not be too much for you to understand. So how do we do that? It's a simple way. I just want you to follow the way I will explain in the next slide. So let's skip this and let's see the next one. Thank you very much. Now the first example I'm going to take is sodium chloride. Aqueous sodium chloride. When I say aqueous, it has been dipped in water. You can read line by line, but because of time, I'm not going to be reading line by line. Now the basic thing is aqueous sodium chloride. Just look at what I want to show you. Don't waste them. It's a very simple process. Write NaCl. Ionize it. Na plus. Then what? Cl minus. Write the aqueous solution, which is water. Ionize it. H plus. Then what? OH minus. Then divide them into two compartments. Then look at what is going to be discharged at each compartment. What, where will this move to? Cata, cations move to cathode. Where will this move to? Anions will move to the what? We move to the anion. So it is just like that. You repeat the process over and over again. But the question is, how do you know which is going to be discharged at this compartment? And how do you know which is going to be discharged at this compartment? These are things that we are learning here. And these are things we want you also to understand because it varies. Depends on the type of what? Type of uh, substance that you are trying to electrolyze. So let's keep that simple. It's very simple to know how we are going to split them and why we are going to set them up. But factors that will affect them are what we want to talk about. Now, here, we want to focus on what? The second factor, which we call the concentration of the ion. So here, we are talking about electrolysis of aqueous sodium depends on concentration of what? The electrolyte. Now, what do we mean by concentration of the electrolyte use? How do we see that? Like I do say, I said that in the beginning. The more positive ion at this compartment is the one that is going to be discharged. The more negative at this compartment, you know, cathode move what? Cations will move to the cathode, and anions will move to the anion. So here, the cathode attracts more sodium ion than that of what? That of water. And here, at this compartment, more of chlorine ion is attracted than what? More of what? Now, another good point is what I was talking about for a level student. The E naught, the value of the E naught, the overall E naught of each of them, you can compare the two. The one that is more positive at this compartment and the one that is more negative at the other compartment. So it's a very good thing for you to keep in mind that when you are doing electrolysis of sodium and chloride, aqueous sodium chloride, the factor of the concentration of the electrolyte will have effect on what is going to be decided. And because of that, the concentration of sodium is more than that of hydrogen. And the concentration of chlorine is more than that of OH. So here it is just like the reverse of the position of ion you have learned in your junior classes. This case now, H plus is not going to be discharged because the concentration of what? Na plus is what? Higher here and the position of Cl minus is higher than the compartment. I hope you understand this. We can move to the next one. Yes, again, so going to the next one, this says uh, the electrolysis of dilute sodium chloride solution. Now, if you look at the one we did the other time, it was uh, aqueous sodium chloride. This now, it is now dilute. Now, this type of situation, the concentration of the ion will not have effect. These are things that the examiner will test you on. Now, it is now what I talked about, the value of this. Now, your mathematical skill is going to be tested. Let me quickly tell you. 
This is the standard E, e naught we've talked about, electromotive force, or you said standard electrode watt potential of the cell, or standard EMF of the cell, and how you call it. May I ask this simple question to viewers? Which one is more of negative value between this value? Because if you are not good with your little skills of mathematics, it will harm you. These are things that most people don't know. So we need to be careful about which one is more negative here, which one is more. Okay, let me just ask it in a simple way. Which one is as more positive? Value? Which one is bigger between minus 2.71 and minus 0 0.83? So because if you don't know this, don't let me use the word suffer. One is going to what suffer. So one needs to understand that here, if you look at this, this guy, it's just like saying minus one and minus two. Which one is more positive? Minus one is of higher value than minus two. Or is a negative one is more than the same thing here. This guy is more positive than this guy. So if this guy is more positive than this guy, at this compartment, this guy has what? The preference of what? Of discharging. And that is what I'm talking about. So always keep that as the cathode. You look for the one that is more positive. Cathode, cations move there. Let's come to the second compartment. Look at this, guys. Now, here, you need to know this. Which of these has the lower value? Because this is the handle. Which one has? Because these are two positive answers. It's simple to know the one. So, at here, you also go with the one that's what, that you have for the lower value. So, at cathode, the one which is more positive. At anode, the one which is more negative. So this is the terminology we use for this type. But for those of you that you are good in cramming, like cram la pop, you might keep it in mind, dilute sodium chloride. Keep it in mind, this guy here, we what we discharge hydrogen, and this guy here we discharge oxygen. Hydrogen and oxygen are liberated respectively. Do you understand? But for understanding it, why is because the value of E nodes of each of them. And that is the reason why I put that first factor because many of your textbooks don't talk about that. We may move to the next one. Admin, please. Thank you, my dear admin. We can write the overall reaction, which I told you this is what is discharged oxygen and hydrogen, respectively. So, overall cell reaction, I may take my time to teach you guys on how to balance a redox reaction. I'll do that in a separate, on my short video, where I will just teach you for basic and what in our own acidic medium. We can move. Next one. Thank you. Now, this is the second exercise. Like I said, I've provided ex ex all the remaining exercises here. I have provided detailed solution. So, the exercise here you are going to be doing is just more what I've discussed. Which PC will be more reduced? You are taking go 3 plus or, or water. Compare this reduced, more reduced. Where does reduction take place? May I ask? My administrator can answer the simple question. Oxidation takes place at the what? At the anode. Reduction takes place at the cathode. So, Cathode, what did I tell you about cathode? Cations move. The one that is more positive will be the one that water will be discharged. So it goes without saying, and the other ones will be the same thing. So this is what you can practice at, at your own for viewers watching at home or wherever you're watching from. It's a simple thing you should be able to do. I have solution. I think I'm to the solution. I'm not going to talk about them. Just keep this one, next one. This is continuation. So I will talk quickly on the last or the second factor because the last factor. I'll take that with a factor that affects this charge of iron in the next video. But before that, like I said at the beginning of this video, the concentration of the ions we only affect the what? The what? The anions. I talk about that if you are following. I told you. So these are things that you guys don't pay attention to in your text material, or maybe you don't understand. That's why we are making it more clearer here. Now, you can quickly read through this. How does concentration affect? It affects what the discharge of the anions only. Anions with high concentration will be poor. The one that has high concentration will be what will be discharged. Then there is a popular question, I think, for those O level students, like talking about concentration and uh, conductivity. Yeah, it's kind of simple. Like I do say, you know, ionic equilibrium, electrochemistry, and uh, what's it called? The your what do you call this the uh, chemical equilibrium they they are uh, like you know they cross into each other so you need to have a deep knowledge of all these things so that you won't be afraid of chemistry that's just it if you know these things these three topics i think your physical chemistry it's good your inorganic it's very good to for you to move on so like i said keep it in mind anions only that is what concentration affects 
they don't take place what they don't affect what they catalyze. So concentration and conductivity, I'm talking about that so that I will not forget. It's a kind of situation whereby you say it's an inverse relationship. You can keep that in mind because of your exam. Next, I Now, a very good example which I will talk about on concentration, I will start with common sort. We are going to do electricity of concentrated. You can see the word. They will say some textbook will tell you fused. Do you understand? These are things you see. So concentrated. So when you say concentrated, one thing I will first come to your mind is uh, go to the anion compartment. That is where you want to focus on your concentration. We can quickly do our own review. Like we do say, don't waste your time. Sodium and uh, chlorine. Everybody knows how. Water and this guy. These are your two compartments. I hope I'm not cutting. So, fine. Now, if we have that, you can see the standard electric potential of each of them is given, as you can see. So, but all the same, at that compartment of Na and plus, that is the cathode. What I told you is that you need to know if these values are given, I think you don't need to wait. The one that is more positive, right? At this compartment. So, from this guy, these two guys, which one is more positive? between these two guys. I think I talked about that. The one that is more positive is even the one I've highlighted in green. So don't, don't need to disturb yourself. So if you are still thinking about that, that is that. So learn about your number system if you are much learn to know the relationship between the number lines and absolute values. Now, this second one, now this is where we are going. The second one, let me allow you guys to see very well. Let me just shift to one side. Now the other compartment, you might look into this. Now, if you want to go, you know at the handled compartment I talked about is the one that is what that has the what negative value. So if you look at these two guys, the one that has the lowest value between these two guys should have been this guy. I hope you guys are following, should have been that. But because we are talking about concentration, so because of concentration, concentration of what of chloride ion is more than that of what that of what oxygen, and because of that, the one with higher concentration will be oxidized, will be discharged, will be prefect. And this is the terminologies and logic we use on that electrolysis. So I want you guys, I don't want you guys to have issues with all these. And that is why I said instead of me going to 65, I want to stop at 38 or what, then I'll continue so that everything will make sense. So don't slip on back at me. Don't slip on back, those that are listening. It is for you to get this. So when you see them in your examination, no matter the way the examiner is trying to, you know, doing some kind of testing your knowledge of it. If you have watched this video and you watch it to the end, I don't think you have any problem getting your full marks. The next one. Yeah, a standard uh, electrolysis of concentrated sodium chloride. I'm not going to talk too much about it. We just talked about that. Please, you might move on so that we can save time. So this is just the reaction. I told you I'm not right simple reaction. If you don't know how to write the balance equation of a read pause, reaction. So, I haven't said that for you guys to see. Like I do say, let me see you guys. You don't need to see me most time. Just see what is there. Move on and uh, let's see the next one. Let's see. are almost getting there. So, the summary on concentration that we've talked about, because you need to understand because these two will come out in your exam. Most examiners love this. Understand? If it is dilute, my dear student, oxygen and hydrogen, hydrogen and oxygen is liberated. Simple thing. If it is concentrated, what did I tell you about concentration? Only the what anion side. So here, hydrogen and chlorine is discharged. So this is popular everywhere you go. Dilute will give you hydrogen and oxygen. Concentration will give you hydrogen and hydrogen and chlorine. So you can see hydrogen and oxygen. I'm talking about cathode and anode respectively. So keep this in mind. Examiners love this, and this is what is going to be asked. Next one. Thank you, Admin. You are really doing a wonderful job. So now we've talked, we are talking about summary of what we talk, we've talked about before we move to the last factor. Cations always move to the what? Cathode for reduction. Now, keep this short note. You can see, always remember, I put it there for you to always remember. Active metals, when I say active metals, that are group one and group two. Group one A and group two A. That is talking about. Uh, Group 1A, you know group 1, element in group 1, if you don't know that, you can go and then watch our video on the periodic table, we have analyzed a lot, I will still do more for you guys to understand. For group 1, you know them, K, N, A, or you say, Lina, I have, I'm a memonist. 
le temps sur Dion Potassium, Rubidium, Francium, and Cesium. So that's that. Then group two, these are things you can also know. Forget about the way I'm saying them. So when you say group one and group two, and aluminum will not be reduced even with higher concentration. They can never be reduced. Please note that. Ah, uh, I have mentioned of the aqueous solution. We say the more E naught, E naught means more negative. They are ions of active metal. So what we are saying is that active metals are those ones that, whether I like it or not, now them go discharge. Sorry about using that English because I want you guys to get it. So active metals, you know what I mean by that. Whether they are what you are trying to reduce them, they will never be reduced. I guess in the idea, active metal, they will name active. So they can't be reduced. They are always very active. They are ions of active metals. Please group one and group two. Even if the concentration is very high, please always note that uh, in aqueous solution, they are always active and they are what the value of their E naught. E naught is what means what they are what more negative. And you know, if you are talking about cations, you mean what they should have more positive what value. So that is what we are Then the less active metal means cations or uh, those ones that are dark. And if you have studied the other explanation I gave to you about position of the ion in ECS, you don't even have problem here. If you can just follow that. For all these guys, you can see they will be what they will be reduced to what at the cattle because they have more positive value. So please keep this in mind. Gold, noble metal, silver, copper, we have our chromium and cadmium. You can see them. All these metals listed here because they are going to be reduced at the cathode. They are not going to be oxidized at the cathode. They always get reduced at the cathode because they are what they are E naught is what more positive. Please note that. Next, please, I will soon finish. Now, another important note which you need to keep in mind is that when we have oxo anions, anions that contain oxygen. SO42 minus CO3. You know what I'm talking about here? If you have learned the position of ions in the electrochemical system, you may not need to master this. What we are talking about here is that the elements, what the one below, will be what discharge in preference of the one above it. So, but you can, if you want to memorize this, it's also good. Oxo ions are not going to be what oxidized because the central atom is already in its highest OS state. When I say oil state, I mean what oxidation state. So also keep in mind, what do I mean by that? This cannot be discharged. Instead of this, oxygen are going to be discharged. That's what we're talking about. Now for halides, halides are halogens, you know them. Iodine, bromide ions, chloride ions can be oxidized only at what high concentration. Exception. Fluoride can never be oxidized. Please, because it's very reactive. Then the next one. Fluorine, fluorine, iodine, bromine, chlorine in dilute aqueous solution can also not be oxidized because they have more, or their standard electro potential is also more positive. So it's a short note you can keep at the back of your mind. We can move to the next slide. We are almost getting there. So the next slide is your exercise. Clearly, I will not also talk about that. I've provided the solution. You have to predict the electrolysis reaction and of the aqueous solution of any 2 so 4 if it is electrolyzed using platinum. Electrode. Uh, with the last factor I will talk about in the next class is the nature of the electrode, how it affects. For platinum electrode is an inert electrode which will not take part in the reaction. Ionize this, try that, perform it, you will see what is going to be destroyed at the cathode and at the what anode respectively. Solution are available next, but I don't want you guys to see it. Just next it, admin. Next is more small. Next, I think these are solutions. Next. So this is next, not that is previous. Okay, another example. You perform the one for lithium iodide. Perform the same using the same graphite. I want you to just try or attempt my explanation of the short note I've given to you. The same process. Graphite electrode is enact. They won't have effect on what you are electrolyzing. Next solution are also available. This is almost where I'm going to stop. Next please. I am waiting for you all. It's just you. If you press this thing once. And it's not going, you don't need to press more than one. So, uh, the thing is, the previous place, the first and the second example or exercise are what you are going to do for me to watch, to see your comments. You can drop the answer. Let me see if you understand. 
Then in the next class, we are going to continue with the third factors. Now we said three factors affect this charge of ion, position of the ion, the concentration of the ion, the third factor which is the nature of the electrode. I told you I will talk about that in the next slide, in the next section. So I will see you guys soon. Don't forget, attempt this exercise, a simple exercise. Follow the law of position of ion. And if you are A-level student, follow the concept of what the value of what standard hydrogen what the standard of electro potential of the cell. Keep it in mind, you need to study. If you don't study, you cannot what you cannot win, you cannot excel. So always keep that at the back of your mind. Study well and make sure you know how to manage your time. I'll see you guys soon by the grace of God in the next video. Bye for now. Thank you.